Okay, so now we're doing repetition. So this is class, repeat. Okay, same business. We're gonna do a public, static, void, main, string, args. Okay, save it. This is going to be repeat.java. Okay, so it goes like this. Let's say I have my system out print line and I have, I don't know, oh damn it. And I have uh, some stars, right? I have some asterisks and I have these asterisks, I don't know, repeating a couple of times, something like this, four times. Okay, so if I go in there and I compile and run this thing, Java C, repeat java java repeat whoops all right it shows you the four stars four lines of stars so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a loop to repeat these lines for me as many times as i want because it might be four times it might be 400 times so it goes like this so just like c++ for int i is equal to zero i is less than i don't know four because that's how many times I want to repeat this, I++. Plus plus. And I'm just going to grab these, one of these lines, throw curly brackets, save it, and compile the thing, run it, and it works exactly the same. Okay, so this, this is a way for you to repeat a single line of code a bunch of times. What actually happens is you have this loop. This is a for loop, right? for loop, okay, which is your repetition, repetition, okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to change the values of i to 0, 1, 2, 3, it will not go all the way to 4, okay, well let's show this, so I'm going to take this out, paste this, now I'm going to show you that i equals plus i, right? And then when I run this thing now, these are the values of i, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, doesn't get to the 4, you want to include the 4, no problem, make this equal to 4, and now we're going to include the 4 also. So save it, compile, repeat, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So the way it goes is you have your you have a for int variable, right? This basically you have a start, start, you have a stop, and then you have a step. Okay, we're starting at zero, we're gonna stop at four, and we're going to be increasing this thing by plus one every time. Okay, doesn't have to go in this direction. By the way, the step is, let's say I'm gonna change this to plus equals one. All right, same thing. So plus plus or plus equals one, same thing. Let's save it, compile, run, same thing, right? So this is my step of one. So let's say what I'm going to do is, and by the way, if you have a single line of code, just like would you if, you don't have to use the curly brackets. So I'm gonna get this here, throw it in there. I put a little one in there too to separate things. Right, and what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna change my step. Step is gonna go two. So when I go, when I do this, you're gonna see i is equal to zero, two, four. Okay, Let's see if it works. Compile, run, zero, two, four. Okay, so this is me changing the step from one to two. All right, doesn't have to go in this direction. You can go backwards. So I'm gonna copy this whole thing Okay, and I'm gonna start this thing at four. I'm gonna tell it to go on while I am greater than, the i is greater than or equal to zero. And then I'm gonna tell it to go backwards. Oops, negative. All right, so now it will do four, two, zero. Save it, compile, run. There it is, four, two, zero. 
All right. Any questions? And you can ask the user to enter this number, right? If you if you want something to happen as many times as the user wants to, you tell them, hey, how many times do you want to this to repeat? And you just replace this variable, whatever the, I mean, this number right here with some variable. You ask the user to enter a value into a variable, put that in there, and the loop happens as many times as the user wants to. So these are your basics of a for loop. Any questions? Okay. You can have loops inside of other loops, just like we had ifs inside of other lifts, ifs. Those are examples of nested loops. I don't think we're going to do a whole lot of these. Okay. More important things to do with Java. Uh, okay. So the next thing is let me show you how to do these things with a while loop. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite each of these using a while loop. So rewrite the above using a while loop. Okay, I'm going to pick some other variable. Let's call it int j. And I'm going to make j is equal to 0. I'm going to say while j is less than or equal to 4. Curly brackets. I'm going to throw this stuff in there. I'm just going to change this thing to while. Okay. And I'm going to change this j is equal to j. So this is this here is you start. This here is you stop. And the step is j plus equals j plus equals 1. OK? This is the step. Save it. And let's see if it works the same. Compile, run, there's your while, which works exactly like your for. Yes? Questions? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to rewrite now this one. Rewrite the above using a while loop. I'm not going to say int j here because I'll be redeclaring the variable. I'm just going to say j. J starts at 0, J is less than or equal to 4, J plus equals 2, save it, compile, run, and it works just like, just like your for loop, okay, now let's go, let's, let's make it go backwards, copy this, throw that in there, so this time J is going to start at 4, it's going to go on while it is greater than or equal to 0, and it's going to go backwards. Okay, same thing as the loop above. Compile, run, and there you go. Okay, so uh, other than this, right, you can have, let's see if I have some exception handling here. Exception handling. Why don't I just download this whole thing? All right, there you go. So you in here? I should have taken off that guy's name. All right. So in there, you have uh, some kind of an exercise where the user is going to be entering information using the. J option pane, show input dialog, right? You need to include the Java X swing in order for that thing to work. And there is a possible problem with this. Maybe the user is going to go and enter not a number, right? You're asking for a number, you're trying to convert whatever they're going to enter into a double, which is a decimal number. But what if they accidentally enter just like some text? You can't convert that to a number, okay? And uh, that's why we're gonna have this try and catch Right, and we're going to do. Let's see what happens. No pointer exception. I don't even know if that's going to work. So let's see. So I'm going to save this. This is in downloads. Let me copy it to the desktop. Okay, close this. Reopen it again here. Okay, so I'm going to go to my terminal, Java C exception handling java okay java exception handling 
Okay, little dialog box should pop up. Okay, so let's say I'm not going to enter anything. I'm just going to cancel this thing. Okay, canceling the program. Did it actually show me this? Yeah, there you go. So normally what's going to happen is if I, have, if I did not have this error handling message, my program would just crash and it will show you something about no pointer exception, you know, the ugly Java error messages. Well, I'm substituting the ugly Java message with my own cute little dialog box that tells you canceling the program, okay, and that's it, right? Program gracefully exits. So this is if I just hit the cancel button, okay? Now, let's say I'm gonna go in there, arithmetic exception, I don't know if that's gonna work. Let's try the vision. All right, because you can't divide by zero. That should give me an arithmetic exception. So I'm gonna save it, compile, run. The first number I'm going to enter is gonna be like a four. Second number I'm gonna enter is like a zero. All right, and hopefully, since the computer can't do this kind of stuff, oops. It's infinity, great. Wow, Java, you're amazing. Okay, so there you go, now it's infinity. All right, no arithmetic exception. Uh, yeah, Java is amazing at math. So you couldn't, even, you couldn't even trick it. So if you did this in C++, the program would just crash, all right? Java doesn't crash, okay? It handles things, handles its business. So I couldn't even get into the arithmetic exception but I will be able to get into the number format exception. All right. Okay, uh, not dividing. Catching this one. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why. Because normally it can do division by zero, but I guess it handled it. Okay, so this is not going to work. Or we couldn't get this exception to, to, to you know, couldn't trip this exception. Now I'm going to do the number format exception, which is going to result from me not entering a number. So if I enter not a number, we're not gonna be able to convert this thing and that should show, hopefully give me the number format exception. So I'm gonna save this, compile, uh, run it, and I'm gonna give it garbage. And there you go, you must enter a number and it goes right back to this thing. Okay, and that's it. The program ends gracefully again. So, uh, Class break continue continue okay and the break and continue is going to work like public static void main string args okay and in there I'm going to have a loop with some of this stuff no nope. oh I had it right here so this one let me copy some of this stuff here. This is going to be that. And save this. Break continue that Java. So you can see how to, you know, break and continue things. So I'm going to recycle this stuff that I had. Not there. And this other one. So I had a while true, and I'll just get the user to enter one thing. Throw that in there. I'm not even going to do the try this time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the user enter, uh, this is a string, and this is a double Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if num1 is equal to, let's say, enter 1 to stop. Okay, so I'm going to go in there, and if this is true, I'm going to stop the loop. I have too many curly brackets for this. Get rid of this. All right, so let's see if this works. So first of all, it's going to be a never-ending loop. It's going to go on forever. This is Java C break continue Java. Eh, why don't you like break? OK, 
Okay, now we're gonna run it. And okay, so I'm gonna give it a two, three, four, five, six, negative ninety-nine, one, and it stops for one. Okay, so this is how you stop the loop. Okay, uh, I can also have a continue. So if num2 is equal to 2, want to stop, 2 to continue, alright, and in here I'm just going to say uh, system out print ln continuing, ing, that's how you spell it, I hope, there's a t in there, okay, and then I'm just going to say continue, damn, Continue. Okay. So, what is the effect of the continue? Makes the loop go all the way to the top. Okay. So, if I have some kind of an extra little message in here, like there, I'm going to say hi, for example. So, my question to you is what value do I need to enter for this message to show? If I enter 1, the loop start stops here. If I enter 2, it will show this message, then it will go to the continue, and then it will go straight back to the top. So, how can I show this message? Any other number other than 1 and 2, yeah. right? So, let's try that. Compile it. If num1. Alright, so we already know it stops for one. Let me give it a three. All right, for a three, it shows you the little high five, another another little high six, another little high. I t I give it a two. Now it's continuing. It did not show me the little high, and if I give it a one, it stops. Okay, so that's the basics. That is your while true, the never-ending loop never-ending loop, right? Which we need to stop somehow using a break, and we can also make it continue from the beginning using a continue. Any questions? Can you just stop continue and continue? Yeah, you can stop continue and continue. I misspelled continue and continue. How do I spell continuing right? There shouldn't be an I after the end. Continue. No, you have to have an I after the end. Continue. Continue. I knew there was something wrong. And then wrong. continue is just all sorts of nice stuff. Not this one? No, it's not. Uh, the the string the S1 print out. at the end of that? This year? No. Uh, go go uh, to that for two, right? Oh, that one. <laughs> Whatever. That's how you spell it in no, French. No, that's not how you spell that <laughs> either. You left out a T. You happy now? Happier. Spelling Nazi. All right. We're good? Yeah, I was kind of surprised that it didn't go to the next. This, this did not work the way I thought it would. But whatever. Okay? So I guess it's just a way for you to show you, I mean, if, if, if you encounter an error message, it stops. Okay? There's no way for you to make it continue, at least for now. Questions? Comments? Concerns? All right. We did all this. In about an hour. So, let's have a look. If there's anything else I want to tell you, yeah, reception handling, repetition. So, yeah, you have a couple of assignments that you're going to do for this week. You have your chapter six summary. I guess let me have a look at it real quick. Make sure that I didn't skip anything the book told you. Wait for it. Yeah. Blah, 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 there's a while, there's a for, oh, there's a do while. I forgot to tell you about the do while. All right? So what's a do while? A do while is a kind of a loop that happens at least one time. All right, so I'm going to go in there. I'm going to take this out for a second. All right, and let's say you have your, normally you would have like while, while age is less than, I don't know, 10, and let's say you have 
and age is equal to eight. All right, and then in there, I'm gonna get one of these. Uh, let's make it a double. Double is age, uh, right? And then here I'm gonna ask for my age is going to be equal to whatever they enter. Okay. So if if well, first of all, let's see if this works because I've been breaking things today, left and right. So Java. Right, so enter one, stop, two to continue. That's not correct. Let me cancel this. All right, so that's that's the ugly message that we're avoiding with with the the things that we put the, the exception handling. Right, if you don't have the exception handling, you see this ugly message. Okay, so let's say I'm going to tell it uh, enter age less than ten to continue. Did I spell it right? Okay, so save it, run it, all right, so I'm going to give it a 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, stops, right? If I go in there and I do, let's say, instead of 10, I mean 8, is 18 now. This loop is never going to happen, right? Age is not less than 10, let's see, nothing, okay? Now, there's another kind of a loop. And that kind of a loop will happen at least one time. So it is useful for the purposes of when the user is going to be entering information into the program, you would want the thing to happen at least one time, right, for them to enter the information. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab this, move it at the end, throw a semicolon. That's the only time you're going to do a semicolon. Then you're going to do a do in there. Okay, hopefully that works. So notice, age is 18, right? This previous loop never happened, but now the do while should happen at least one time. Okay, so go back, compile, run. There you go. We're getting into the loop even though the condition that we're going for is, you know, it's not correct. Okay, so this, even though this is not true, we're still going in there because the condition gets checked at the end. So now if I give it a less than 10, it will keep going. If I give it an 18 again, stops. Okay, so what is a do while loop? Uh, do while is a loop that happens at least one time because the condition, condition gets checked at the end. Okay, questions? All right, Let's see what else? So yeah, I showed you the, the while loop. I showed you uh, the for loop. I showed you how to use a break. Uh, I showed you how to make a loop that stops when they enter a certain value. That was the do while. And that's pretty much all the book has. All right, we're good. Fantastic. So that's all I have for today. I'm gonna upload all these things and videos, question? Okay, we'll talk about other things as soon as I do this. All right, so I'm gonna stop it.